Oh my goodness. All right. So it's almost mid-March and raspberry pies are still very scarce. But if you were one of the lucky ones to score a raspberry pie within the last 30 days, here are some accessories that I recommend for your new pie, you lucky son of a bitch. If you're going to use your Raspberry Pi 4 as a desktop computer and you want active cooling, I recommend pretty much any case from Argon 40. The Argon Neo case keeps the Raspberry Pi in its regular layout. Of course, you have cutouts for all of your IO, USB, HDMI, power, all of that good stuff. It has a removable lid, of course, so you have access to all of your GPIO pins, power over ethernet, et cetera, et cetera. The Argon One V2 is a favorite of mine because of course you have that wedge shape, you have ventilation, you have that fan in the middle for active cooling. And of course on the back, it reorients the IO for the Raspberry Pi 4 and you get a full size HDMI along with the rest of the IO. It's a cool looking case and I definitely would recommend it for makers or for anyone who just wants a nice, clean desktop setup. You do, of course, have this removable lid to access GPIO pins, and like the Argon Neo, they are labeled so you know where everything is. Now, the big boy from the Argon One group is, of course, the Argon One M.2. You have the same layout as the Argon One V2, full-size HDMI, and, of course, you get that big basement at the bottom for a SATA M.2 drive. The family of Argon 40 cases for the Raspberry Pi 4 are just solid. They look awesome and they will keep your Pi cool. Now, if you want passive cooling in a cool package, I do recommend cases from DeSalvo Systems. DeSalvo cases are pretty big and dense, but it will keep your Pi cool. What you're looking at here is the Phineas case, and it's one of my favorites because it has an awesome design on top. You have space for the micro SD card slot, and you also have space for a ribbon cable if you want to access the GPIO. It's pretty heavy, beefy, but it does the job. Okay, this next accessory goes without saying, but you should definitely have yourself a mouse and keyboard to set up your Raspberry Pi. Now you can go with a traditional wired mouse and keyboard, but if you want something that's wireless in a nice little clean package, check out the Logitech K400 Plus. I think everyone I know who has a Raspberry Pi probably has one of these keyboards lying around. It's a great keyboard and mouse combination for home theater setups, but like if you want something that's not gonna take up a lot of room on your desk while you're using your Raspberry Pi, the K400 Plus is where it's at. I like the layout, uh, the buttons, they feel okay. They're somewhat spongy to me, but it does the job. Now, if you are using your Raspberry Pi on the go and you don't wanna have a big keyboard in your bag, I recommend the Re Mini X1. This little keyboard is so adorable to me. You can put this thing in your pocket and it just works with everything out of the box. Windows, Mac OS, and of course Raspberry Pi. You have this little slot here to store the USB receiver and it's just cool. Like it, it's, it's not the best typing experience. Like if you ever had one of those old school uh, sidekicks, for example, the typing experience is sort of similar to that, but it's great if you just need to write a couple of lines of code and terminal or something like that, but it does a job. And again, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Okay, for the zero and zero two W users, the zero for you USB header is a must have because who in the hell wants a USB dongle? This is a nice clean package for the zero two W. It connects to the USB via pogo pins, and once you get this plugged in, you're all set. You can have up to four peripherals plugged in at once. So mouse, keyboard, whatever, you're good to go on this. And speaking of Raspberry Pi Zero, I still recommend the original RetroFlag G Pi case. With the release of the Zero 02W, there has been a resurgence of support for this case. There are a couple of images for retro gaming built around the Zero 02W and this case. So I highly recommend picking it up. Now for the CM4 folks, there are plenty of carrier boards for the CM4, okay? Plenty. 
probably more carrier boards available right now than there are actual CM4s available for purchase. But if you're just getting started, there are three boards that are on my radar. First being, of course, the official Raspberry Pi CM4 IO board. Second one for gaming, of course, the GPI case 2. And finally, Pyunora. <laughs> get that in frame. The Pyunora is the board that really got me excited about CM4s. It's basically an Arduino Uno form factor that supports the CM4. You get single HDMI port, USB type A, and a type C for power. You can also use this as a host device by switching this toggle here, and you can use it just like a regular Arduino. What I have here is the Pro model, and the only difference between the Pro model and the regular Pi Unora is, of course, the camera port and the M.2 slot on the bottom. The Pi Unora is awesome because you have the size and flexibility of an Arduino Uno, but you can also run Raspberry Pi OS on this. It really makes for a great desktop experience booting from an NVMe, and you can get these now on Crowd Supply and a couple of other vendors, and I'll leave links down in the description box. But it's it's just a great board to get started with CM4s or just with maker stuff, period. So yeah, those are some accessories that I recommend for your Raspberry Pi. Question of the day, what accessories do you recommend for the Raspberry Pi? Doesn't matter if it's the regular Raspberry Pi 4, 3, CM4, 0, whatever. Let us know what you recommend down in the comments. If you found this video helpful or informative, hit the like button and subscribe for more Raspberry Pi content. I'm Jason, and I will see you in the next video.